This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories. Striking union bus drivers are now in their third week on the picket lines, and there's still no deal between them and operator Transdev. NBC7's Audra Stafford explains how it's impacting San Diegans who rely on the bus. Signs just like this one are posted here at the H Street Transit Center warning people that their bus may be delayed or may not show up at all as they try to deal with a major driver shortage due to that strike. At the MTS facility in Chula Vista today, members of Teamsters Local 683 rallied outside the gates for a third straight week. The strike started May 19th when drivers walked off the job demanding better conditions and pay from Transdev, the company that operates the buses on behalf of MTS. Transdev told NBC7 Friday that after hours of negotiations, the two sides still weren't able to reach an agreement. Meantime, many who rely on the bus are struggling to get where they need to go, especially in the South Bay, where today MTS said less than 10% of routes were covered. We spoke to one woman who takes two buses and the trolley from San Isidro to get to her monthly doctor's appointment in Chula Vista, only to discover this morning that both buses were canceled. It is frustrating because you sure you're supposed to be at some time in a place and right now you don't know. What about is nobody in home and nobody can choke me there? I have to lose my appointment and I have to pay. $25 for missing the appointment. Fortunately, her grandson was able to pick her up in time to get her to her appointment. But others haven't been so lucky. If you plan to take the bus, MTS recommends checking ahead for any service alerts either on their website or through the Pronto app. From Chula Vista, I'm Audra Stafford, NBC7. In a statement, MTS told us it is aware of the inconveniences arising from this work stoppage and apologizes to riders for the disruption. Mayor Todd Gloria is pushing for San Diego's ban on homeless encampments. Today, he spoke with other local leaders at a downtown elementary school, highlighting how the homeless encampment ordinance would protect children. Tent encampments block our sidewalks, forcing people to walk in the middle of the street to get around them. That's what children heading to school here have to do, walk in the middle of the street just to get around these tents. The ordinance would ban encampments in all public spaces if shelter beds are available and at all times near parks and schools. But critics of the ban say there is still not enough shelters to house the homeless in the city. The city council will discuss the ban at its June 13th meeting. Memorial Day weekend typically means big crowds headed to the beach, but there was one thing missing from this year's beach experience and you probably recognized it, the sunshine. Our crews went to Mission Beach yesterday, found more sweaters and blankets and shorts and swimsuits. Some people were prepared for the weather, others not so much. Wasn't expecting the weather to be so cold. The weather was better in Amsterdam <laughs> than, than it is right here. I'm kind of cold because I wore shorts. We like the cold because we come from 120 degrees. It's like a broiler where we're from. Uh, I love the weather. Um, right now, where we're from, it's getting a bit warm, a bit toasty, but here it's nice and cool, enjoying the fresh ocean breeze. Okay, so even though a lot of people were split over the cloudy skies, everyone told us they were just happy to spend the holiday here in beautiful San Diego. Could California's sandy beaches become a thing of the past? Well, according to one study, the answer is yes. The U.S. Geological Survey found rising sea levels could erode as much as 70% of California beaches by the end of the century, leaving only cliffs. It found Newport Beach and San Clemente are two of the most at-risk areas. Brooke Martell joins us now with a look at your forecast. We're sticking with that May gray pattern as we get ready to round out this month. And you know what? Some of that marine layer creating those drizzly and misty conditions as well throughout the morning and into your afternoon, even by tonight. We're staying breezy also over the mountain region. Wind speeds anywhere from about 20 to 30 miles per hour. Same thing for the deserts too. We'll be picking up later tonight. That will continue into the overnight hours just as more of this drizzle and mist will develop as well. Thank you, Brooke. Paying more at the pump, how much more we're paying for gas this week as prices continue to climb. And the special honor for a local naval aviator who made the ultimate sacrifice for his country during World War II. That's coming up. Stay with us.
NBC 7 News at 11 p.m. Ask the deeper questions about the day's big stories because you need more than just headlines. Now an update to a story we first brought you last night. We investigated to see what this could mean to you. It's our commitment to provide you with this fresh perspective every night because coverage you count on is only here. NBC 7 News at 11 p.m. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. A 21 year old who is accused of shooting and killing a man and injuring another outside the Central Library downtown is set to be arraigned today. It happened last Tuesday, broad daylight. Just days later, another man was shot several times in the chest outside Phantom Lounge and Nightclub. And it may be part of a concerning trend. Sandag's automated regional justice information system tracked aggravated assaults over the last decade. It shows they've gone up uh, from about 40 a month to 60 per month, not including the two shootings downtown over the last week. The process to fill the open county supervisor seat for District 4 officially gets underway today. It has been vacant since earlier this month when Nathan Fletcher stepped down. A special election will be held in about two months to fill that seat. The window for interested candidates to make their race official starts today. They have one week to return nomination papers to the county registrar. So far, three candidates have declared campaigns for the seat. Democrats Janessa Goldback and Monica Montgomery Stepp and Republican Amy Reichert. Ballots for the special election are expected to go out to voters in about two weeks. The special election will be held August 15th. If no candidate earns a majority of the votes, there will be a runoff held in November. It may come as no surprise coming off a holiday weekend, but gas prices are steadily rising across San Diego County. The average price for a gallon of regular gas is $4.90. It's basically the same price as yesterday, but still a consecutive increase for nearly two weeks now of nearly eight cents in total. Before this latest hike, gas prices went down for several weeks by a little more than nine cents. It's still a far cry from where it was a year ago when we were paying over six bucks a gallon. A somber ceremony was held at Mount Soledad for Memorial Day. It included a special honor for a Navy aviator, Walter Burt Mentis. The plane was shot down in the South Pacific during World War II. 70 years later, the downed plane was located and DNA testing confirmed it was in fact his remains. His great niece attended the ceremony. My dad tells me Bert was one of 11 children, or one of 12 children, and uh, my grandmother was his sister. My dad was one of 14 children, and uh, he tells the story that Uncle Bert would come home, and they just thought he was the biggest hero. Incredible. A plaque dedicated to Mentis joins the thousands there at Mount Soledad. Brooke Martell will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. Only one team in San Diego is certified most accurate. NBC7's First Alert Weather. What does that mean for you? Helping you plan ahead with our hour-by-hour -hour forecast. And knowing exactly when rain will move in. First Alert Weather is coverage you count on. Hey there and happy Tuesday to you. Taking a look at your area forecast, we continue to have the cloudy skies at the coast and also over those inland valleys. But sticking with these coastal communities first, mid 60s for your max daytime high. We have mid to upper 60s over the inland valley communities. Staying a bit cooler over the mountains where we have low 60s today. Westerly winds anywhere from about 30 to 40 miles per hour at their peak. Same thing for the desert region. Breezy there today, but temperatures right around the low 90s. Thank you, Brooke. A ghost town just outside of Joshua Tree National Park has been sold for more than $22 million. Ecology Mountain Holdings bought Eagle Mountain recently, which had been abandoned for 40 years. It was once home to a thriving iron mine, but once that shut down, its 4,000 residents left. Then it housed a prison, which shut down in the early 90s after a deadly riot. The one thing, the only thing known about the company that bought the ghost town is that it is located in Cerritos, just outside of Anaheim and about 180 miles west of that land. We have more coverage you can on at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.